I'm going to start this video by saying something controversial. I am a bigger Halo fan than 99% of the people watching this video. That is just a measurably objective fact. Before I became a YouTuber whose content focused mainly on profound stories and strictly single player games, the only game I ever dedicated my time to was Halo. Call of Duty never appealed to me, neither did Gears of War, but Halo always did. I have been playing Halo since early 2002, before Xbox Live was even a thing. I bought each sequel on day one and feverishly played both the campaign and multiplayer until the next one released roughly three or four years later. Except for Halo 5, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let my achievement list for the Master Chief Collection speak for itself. I have put more time and effort into these games than I have into pretty much any other game, and no, I do not regret it. The most fun I have ever had playing games was when I was playing Halo, and 20 years later, the fun has yet to stop. That said, I will admit that, like a lot of you, I was disappointed with Halo 5. Compared to the other campaigns in the Halo saga, Halo 5 was easily the most lackluster in terms of narrative and epic moments. The multiplayer seemed to ignore the arcade-style gameplay of its predecessors, favoring a competitive, Call of Duty-style approach. Plus, the new game types that 343 were pushing on us in that game, like Warzone and Breakout, felt completely foreign to the franchise. Thank God. The Master Chief Collection came out, because otherwise I might have had to rely on the dwindling lobbies of the previous games, while the masses, as per usual, flocked to whatever was new. For the last five to six years, I played the crap out of the MCC, hoping that when the next Halo game came out, it would be the true next-gen evolution that we were expecting with Halo 5, the one that would surpass the archetypal quality of the original Halo games. Ever since Halo Infinite was announced, the road towards its release has been nerve-wracking for Halo fans, to say the least. There were things that we heard that were encouraging, that it was going to be a spiritual reboot, a return to the franchise's roots. But then of course there were people leaving the project left and right, then there was the one year delay and the whole Craig thing. Thankfully, in the last year, they brought one of the grizzled ancients of Bungie on board as creative director, Joseph Staden, or Staden, sorry. Under his guidance, my hope, though reserved, was safely fostering within my Spartan heart. Now, the time has come. The Halo Infinite multiplayer was released last Monday. Three weeks early. This was such a lovely surprise as a Halo fan, especially because it was happening on the 20th anniversary of Halo 1. Naturally, I stopped the work I was doing on my next video. I had to play it. I had to review it. I'm such a fan. At the time of this video's release, I have put about 15 to 20 hours into the multiplayer. I have experimented with all the guns, modes, and maps, and so far, my general impression is positive. Granted, the multiplayer does have a few problems that it needs to address ASAP, which we will get into, but I think it's safe to say that the positive definitely outweighs the negative. I will address all the specific details in a moment, but I think I will start with a general overview of the gameplay. 343 Industries had no small task on their hands. They have been pulled every which way by the Halo fanbase. There are the people that wished Halo Infinite would return to the weighty, arcade-style gameplay of Halo 3, while others preferred the arena-style competitive combat of Halo 4 and 5. All sides wanted innovation, but innovation in very specific ways that didn't alter what they viewed to be the core formula. Generally speaking, I think it's fair to say that most seemed to be asking for a game that encourages you to goof off like we did in Halo 3 and Halo Reach custom games, while also maintaining a competitive element, like the multiplayer in Halo 2 and 4. As a lifelong Halo fan, I can confidently say that 343 Industries managed to do something really special with the gameplay in Halo Infinite. It feels like 343 took all the best elements from Halo multiplayer, from Combat Evolved all the way up to 5, and mixed them together in a cooking pot. By doing this, Halo Infinite's gameplay simultaneously feels very familiar while also feeling very new. Best of all, it doesn't matter what your experience with the Halo franchise is. Whether you just played Halo 3, whether you're a veteran player, or only started playing when Halo 4 or 5 came out. 
Everybody who picks up this game will recognize something from a past game and feel right at home. You will see staples from past games, like the inclusion of equipment from Halo 3, the sometimes imprecise battle rifle from Halo 2, or the ability to climb up ledges from Halo 5. It all feels like an appropriate mixture, even in regards to something like the inclusion of Sprint. In fact, I'd like to give some attention to the issue of Sprint, because it's one that Halo fans feel very passionately about. There's a significant portion of people who wished the sprint ability never got added into the game as a permanent fixture. I tend to sympathize with this sentiment. Though I liked Sprint's inclusion in Halo Reach as an armor ability, it never felt right as a permanent fixture in 4 and 5. Prior to Halo Reach, it felt good knowing that everybody had the same range of movement, and the only thing you had to focus on was landing the first hit on somebody's shield before your enemy landed one on you. Unfortunately, for those who wished to see Sprint removed, it does return in Halo Infinite. But thankfully, it seems like the best implementation of Sprint so far. Though Halo Infinite has Sprint, it seems like 343 listened to the diehard fans of Halo 2 and especially Halo 3 by subtracting the importance of Sprint from the flow of gameplay. Unlike in Halo 4 and 5 where you'd go from 100 to 150% speed by using Sprint, the extra speed you get from sprinting in Halo Infinite is borderline redundant. It's like a 10% increase, 15% maximum. It really felt like 343 was trying to please both sides here. Though I, like many, would have preferred the complete removal of Sprint, this feels like a solid compromise. I wasn't at all upset with the inclusion of Sprint this time around, like I was with Halo 5 and to a lesser extent with Halo 4. Though I felt the best decision would have been to remove Sprint completely, this was definitely the second best decision and it will satisfy all types of Halo players. There are other tweaks that feel worthwhile as well. The first tweak most Halo veterans will notice is that the precision weapons are no longer the multi-purpose power tools that they were in previous games. If you're a long-time Halo fan like me, you know that as long as you have a battle rifle or DMR and a couple of grenades, that's all you really need to kick ass. This time around, the precision weapons have been depowered a bit, letting weapons like the assault rifle take center stage. While the precision weapons like the BR and the Commando have their utility, they don't solve every problem like they did in past games. In Halo Infinite, I think I would almost always prefer an assault rifle in short to medium proximity. I believe this will work out for the best in the long run because it encourages people to use multiple weapons to solve multiple different types of problems. And you know what that means? It means that the human weapons aren't always preferable. If you know how to use a needler or a stalker rifle properly, it could give you that minimal advantage needed to win a battle. You also need a bit more skill this time around to use the plasma pistol. You can't just easily noob combo everybody like we used to. If you want to stick with the AR and BR, you could still win a lot of games, but there are advantages to using Covenant weapons this time around, and it doesn't feel like a chore experimenting with them. There are a couple of weapons that don't feel worthwhile using though. The Sentinel Beam, in my opinion, is still as worthless now as it was back in Halo 2. The Pulse Carbine only seems worth it in very specific circumstances, but aside from those guns, everything else is a welcome addition. Everything else feels authentically Halo. By the way, before we move off of guns, I have to say that there's something about the feel of the guns in Halo Infinite that feels so satisfying. It feels good emptying a clip from my AR into an enemy player. Like, I can feel each bullet surgically inserting itself into a mother epper's skull, you know? That type of gameplay, where you are encouraged to make as many precise hits as possible, is something that hasn't felt this satisfying to me since I played Destiny 1. Don't get me wrong, on the whole, I don't look back on Destiny 1 all that fondly, but the one thing Destiny always got right was the gunplay, and that level of satisfaction carries over here. There's one last thing I would like to address before we move on to some of my criticisms. We all know that one of the major reasons Halo Infinite got delayed was because of the lackluster graphical fidelity from that 2020 gameplay trailer. Honestly, when I saw that trailer, I didn't mind how it looked. 
I don't play Halo for the graphics, clearly, seeing that I play Halo MCC a lot and all the games on there are roughly 10 years old. Plus, I feel like Halo always had this unique approach to graphics where the art direction took precedence over fidelity or detail, so I was never bothered. But now that I have played Halo Infinite and I see the comparisons between what the game looked like then compared to now, I can confidently say that the extra year paid off. 343 somehow nailed the balance between Halo's classic art direction and making everything look crisp and detailed. Even if nothing else in regards to Halo Infinite reaches the archetypal quality of past entries, I can firmly say that the graphics are the best that they have ever been, and they do enhance the overall experience. Now to get to some of my negatives. I have two minor criticisms that I feel can be addressed pretty easily, and then one major criticism which I will save for last. First of all, the maps. The maps are fine, but like we saw with the last two Halo games, none of the maps really stand out. Halo Infinite doesn't have a Zanzibar, or Lockout, or Countdown. Hell, the bigger maps don't really compare to ones like the Blood Gulch Variations or Sand Trap. They're fine, but there's nothing to them that makes one preferable over the other. They feel more like backdrops instead of actual maps. Like, you can play a match of Slayer on one map and then a match of Slayer on a different map, and you would have barely noticed a difference in the map you were playing on. When the Forge becomes available, I imagine this sort of thing will be easily remedied by introducing new versions of Ivory Tower, Ascension, or The Pit. For right now though, I feel like the map selection is just okay. It certainly could be better. The other minor criticism that will get fixed is the lack of modes. Right now, we just have Quick Play, Big Team Battle, and Ranked. I have no doubt that at some point we'll be able to choose from a variety of options like we do in Halo MCC, where we get to pick Team Slayer, Team Objective, Rumble Pit, or whatever. I imagine that we're limited to three options for now because 343 wants us to try all the game types and not just Slayer, and I'm fine with that for now. But if things stay the way they are for too long, I and many other people will start to get antsy. Now, there is one huge issue that I and many other people are having with the game, and let me tell you, if this isn't addressed soon, it could easily destroy the goodwill 343 is garnering. I am of course talking about the battle pass. If you start at level 0, and you play for 30 matches, and you only manage to get to level 2 out of 99 levels, there's something seriously wrong. 343, I understand you need to make money on a free-to-play game, and you can do that by selling aesthetics. That's fine. But I don't want to have to play 50 matches every time I want to go up a few levels. Especially if the reward is only going to be a couple of low-tier helmets. I don't have that kind of time. Plus, it's not like people are going to get all the armor pieces right away. I've been playing the Master Chief Collection for years, and I still don't have all the armor pieces, effects, or nameplates. You could easily set up a progression system that is tied to merit, while keeping many of the best rewards out of reach, because you did it with the MCC. You wouldn't lose a substantial amount of money doing that either. The highest ranks and customization options could still be near impossible to get. Most of all, I don't want progression tied just to the daily and weekly challenges. You need to offer a baseline level of XP for match completion, as well as challenges based on skill. Give us the opportunity to go for 25 headshots, or getting first place in a competitive match, so we may be rewarded for our practice. Don't base the challenges on random chance, like whether or not you'll be able to play a stockpile match. By the way, I have played more than 30 matches at present, and I still have yet to play a stockpile match. What the hell is up with that? How am I supposed to get the ultimate weekly reward if in 30 plus matches, I still can't get one of the requirements? As much as I am loving Halo Infinite's gunplay at the moment, it's not the definitive way to play Halo. I'll be happy to give my free time to the MCC if the progression isn't fixed soon. I'm not like a COD player or a sports gamer where the newest version of the game becomes the epicenter of all activity. And neither are most Halo gamers. There's a reason why the MCC maintains a strong level of popularity despite Halo 5's existence. You have a very good foundation at the moment, 343. Don't mess this up. 
With all that said, Halo Infinite can maintain that strong momentum by addressing those three criticisms. Hell, I find the gameplay to be so satisfying with Halo Infinite that I can easily imagine it approaching the heights of its former glory. Notice I said approaching. I don't think it will ever be as popular as it was when Halo 2 or Halo 3 were out, but it definitely could become a force to reckon with alongside the Destinies or Call of Duties of the world. If you have an Xbox or a PC, I highly recommend downloading it and playing a few matches. By the way, make sure to spend some quality time with the grappling hook. It's the best thing Halo has added to the franchise since Halo 3's equipment. And that's my review of Halo Infinite's multiplayer. I'll save my thoughts on the vehicles, the music, the sound design for when I review the campaign. If you like this review, if you're as happy as I am that Halo is back in town, make sure to hit that like button. It's free, easy to do, and it helps me out a lot. Let me know what you think of Halo Infinite in the comment section below. Maybe you have some valid critiques or praises that I neglected to mention. I'd love to hear them. Until my next video, just remember, as always and as per usual, I need a weapon.